So we're here this morning reporting from the science department at uh, Ozama. What you see in front of me is a test rig that Silvio's helped me make up to mount the spark plugs and plug leads and the entire ignition system out of the M8 Greyhound. And the way it's running, it's uh, fast becoming a bit of a monkey on my back. The frustrating part about it is, is it's such a simple system. I can't seem to be able to get it to work. The idea is, is to simulate everything set up and just sort of see what's going on. Uh, I have tried a new ignition coil with no success. I've tested all the spark plug leads, checked all the spark plugs, they all seem to be good. Now we'll just do a couple of sort of static tests to run up. I'm able to put a drill onto the bottom of the distributor and rotate it so that we can check to see what sort of spark output we're getting. All right, so you should be able to hear the spark plug sizzling, but first thing is that it looks highly irregular to me. Some cylinders better than others. And also, the spark is quite weak. Very weak, actually. So I've taken our new old stock distributor and sort of roughly marked out on the top of the distributor where the poles are for the different cylinders. With the rotor button installed, if we are to rotate the body of the distributor so the points are just about to, to open, we find that the rotor button is actually pointing almost in between cylinders. And in this case here, it's not pointing at number one cylinder, it's in between one and five and although cylinder number five will be the next to fire in the sequence it's nowhere near ready to take a spark so this would potentially explain why the engine is so weak when you're revving it up why the problem gets worse the longer you run it and probably why if you spray some WD-40 or something in here it temporarily fixes the problem because it stops the spark from jumping to earth and it makes its way to the correct cylinders. So I've got some bits together for the Greyhounds distributor. Glenn's helped me out with a few little small pieces here. So I've got to make up an adapter so that the replacement rotor button will fit onto the shaft of the distributor. I need a way of locking it to the flats on the shaft of the distributor. Hand finished a little wedge. It's gonna go on the inside of the adapter and I'll file a flat into the outside of this collar so it locates into the rotor button. So I've got the collar on the distributor shaft. I've got the little wedge in there. Glued it in with some epoxy and we should be ready to give that a test. We're going to replace the contact points and the condenser. The idea of the condenser here is, is to reduce the arcing that occurs when the primary voltage in the coil is discharged when the points open. Mm, but let's get the points out. This is what makes the ignition system go. So it's these contacts making and breaking a circuit that charges a coil and causes sparks to spark. I mean, they're not burnt, but they don't look fantastic. So it's a good thing to change them anyway. Check the fit of the different bits and pieces. They certainly look, look close. So you can sort of see why I've decided to pull the distributor out of the vehicle because uh, to try and do this with it still in the vehicle uh, will require a degree of contortionism that I just don't have the commitment for today. So a pro tip when uh, fitting new contact points, they typically come with a preservative on the contacts to stop them from corroding. So a bit of brake cleaner and a lint-free rag. Give it a bit of a clean. Make sure that 
points are seated properly. Locking screw in, let's get the condenser in as well too. Doing the pigtail, bolt on the pigtail, make sure that's tight, so we've got a good electrical connection. Putting a smear of grease just in behind the rubbing block on the points. The heel on the points will wear if you don't have grease on there, meaning the gap changes and very quickly the, the vehicle suddenly won't run properly. Next thing to do is to actually set the, the gap. In keeping old school, set it to 20 thou, which is around 0.5 of a mil. As you turn that eccentric, it opens and closes the, the gap. And it's just a matter of sticking the feeler gauge in there so that you feel the right amount of drag on it. Not too much, not too little. If I spin it in the direction of rotation, you can see that it's making that nice sort of clicking noise as the heel of the points is riding up over the cam. Gap's consistent, springing well, everything's out of the way, so let's stick this thing back in, give it a go. Got my shiny new rotor button installed and it's keyed to the distributor and it's pointing at the right part on the distributor housing, hopefully. But we've got this challenge here that it has a bevel gear driving it, which means that the distributor can fit into the engine at any one of these particular points here. So how do you go about timing the engine to make sure that the rotor button is pointing at the right place in relation to the cycle of the engine? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. I'm using the remote starter button. What I'm gonna do is flick the vehicle over on the starter motor and I've got a compression tester fitting in cylinder number one and I'm going to just crank the engine until I can start to feel that it's coming up under the compression. So I can feel the suction, so it's getting close to the compression stroke. Okay, there you go, so maybe you heard that, but it, air pressure coming out of here, which means that the engine's coming up to the top dead center compression. So now we need to find the top dead center position. It's a bit tricky on this engine, being an old uh, flathead engine, you can't get direct access to the piston. Uh, otherwise, sometimes you can carefully put a screwdriver down, rotate the engine by hand to find the approximate position of where top dead center is. But um, uh, underneath on the flywheel, there's some timing marks scribed on that, which we can use to give us a more accurate uh, indication of where the engine is on the, on the cycle. Uh, here I am once again, jammed in underneath an oily vehicle. We know that the engine's coming up towards number one top dead center. It's on that part of the cycle. I'm gonna use a screwdriver to turn the engine in the direction of rotation till I start to see a timing mark. This is the V, which corresponds to this notch. If I adjust the contact point so they're just starting to open here, that should give us the appropriate amount of static advance to actually be able to start the engine. I now have to set the distributor position so that the points are opening roughly equivalent to top dead center. I'll put in a feeler gauge. I think the old timers would use a piece of cigarette paper. So I'll rotate the body of the distributor so I'm simulating the direction of rotation of the engine. So now it's got tension on it, it's cl points are closed. As soon as the points started open in the feeler gauge, it starts to get a bit loose. Okay, so it's just come loose there. I'm just going to nip up the lock for the body of the distributor. The rotor button is still pointing at the number one position on the body of the distributor. With the engine running, the mechanism in the distributor will advance the ignition timing, which means that the rotor button will move slightly in this direction in relation to the body of the distributor. So I've got it set so it's sort of at the corner of where the contact is for the number one position. Radio. Distributor caps on, everything's all locked down, ignition's on. 
Let's see if this thing will start. See if we can understand if it's caused by fuel problem or not. <laughs> Alright, so I'm richening the fuel mixture up, that's making it worse now. I'm leaning it off. Sounds like the engine is revving a little bit too fast, so I'll drop the idle speed out of it. That probably sounds a bit more appropriate. Turn it out until it starts to struggle. Start leaning it off, the engine revs are picking up. And it's just basically trying to find the fuel mixture of which the engine is idling the happiness. Now for the fun bit, get to test it. <laughs> quite, quite a Spartan driving position. You gotta jammy yourself in. And once in, it's quite cozy. We've got ourselves a rear mounted six cylinder engine with a four speed transmission. So there you go, Ferdinand Porsche. We've also got some controls for the transfer case for high and low range and also uh, engaging and disengaging the front, front axle. Pretty simple starting procedure. Ignition on, start. Start off in second gear. I'm going to call that a bit of a wrap, I think. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Life on tracks is pretty good fun. It can also be pretty good fun on wheels too. So uh, I'm sure this will continue to be a crowd pleaser at Oz Armor Fest.